Hi guys and welcome to or back to my channel. So as you might have just seen, I have set some mood lighting. Sometimes you just gotta make date night for yourself when you're single. I have always been single, but I'm gonna make some comfort food. And you know what would make me really comfortable right now? Disney food. I live in Canada, so there's no way I could go to Disney, even if I wanted to. And with the pandemic, I probably wouldn't wanna be in the parks anyway. Crowds now scare me. But today I wanted some Disney comfort and I haven't made one of these Disney dishes at home videos in a very long time. I do have a whole bunch filmed and I don't know why I haven't edited them and put them out, but this one will hopefully come to, out to you guys very, very soon. I plan on editing it probably tonight and getting it for you guys tomorrow. We'll see if that happens, but I guess you guys won't know what ha if that actually happens because you don't know what day it is. That works for me. Today we are gonna be making some hamburger spring rolls and also some hamburger pots. They won't be steam buns like from Satuli Canteen and Avatar, but I have been making these burger buns for a very long time and they happen to taste very much like what's inside the hamburger spring roll and inside the hamburger steam buns from Satuli Canteen. So I'm gonna make both today. They're gonna start with the same base and then we'll put them off into the two different, what's the word? formats. One, we're going to make a batch of burger buns and a batch of spring rolls. So if you're interested, please stay along. I hope you are interested because this is going to be a lot of fun. And who doesn't miss Disney and want a little bit of Disney? This is also going to hopefully be super easy. The burger buns will be super easy. It's something I know, but you guys probably just see me struggle with some spring rolls. I'm also wearing some Mickey ears to make myself feel pretty. So let's do this thing. So down in the comments, I'll put the recipe for what I'm doing for the meat and I'll tell you the process so that hopefully you guys can make this. I'll definitely do that for you guys and then you should be able to make this. We're gonna need a couple of things today. I will put the ingredients up on the screen here so you can also just screenshot this and use that. But we are gonna make these. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that I have everything prepped and ready to go. I already have the ground beef in some hot water in our sink, just thawing out a bit because it was frozen and I'm gonna get on with the rest. There might be a couple extra steps for you guys if you need to get extra things ready. I do use like shortcuts with some pre-made stuff, but it works out really well. And if you wanted to make it fresh, like the bacon and stuff, you can definitely do that or you can leave that out. It's all totally up to you. First, we need to get ready with the onion. So the meat recipe that I use calls for half of a finely chopped onion. So I'm gonna use a whole onion since I am cutting it up for two different recipes because I'm essentially making twice the amount of the recipe and then I'm gonna put it into two different vehicles. So let's chop this guy. You guys will probably get to see me cry, but I'm also gonna set up my phone right here with a camera. So that will be in shots. I'm trying to make things more dynamic for you guys. Right, time to cut this onion. This knife is way too dull. Ooh, that is not gonna work. We're gonna bring out the bigger boy. Sorry if you guys are watching this and you're seeing how bad I am at cutting onions. I know I'm bad. I try and that's what matters. One quarter's done and I haven't started crying yet. So I think that that is a plus in my world right now. Oh my god, it hurts so bad. It's not for me. I guess. That is the best that you guys are gonna get because I hate cutting onions. Jeez. So now that our onion is chopped, I am going to preheat my oven to 375 degrees just to make sure that's heating up for the burger buns. I haven't thought far enough ahead for the spring rolls to see how I'm gonna cook those. Probably have to fry them. And if you've been to my channel before, try to deep fry, it doesn't go that well. But I guess we'll try again. I need to get my cooking better. So yeah, let me start reheating that oven. 
bake. Three, seven, five, start. And it's preheating. I did that on my first try. I literally look like I've been crying because I went through a breakup or something. It's just onions, I swear. Though I am a sad girl. 24 seven. So now that that's preheating, I am going to check on the lean ground beef that is in the sink right now. I don't think it's that thawed, but I might throw these into the microwave for like 20 seconds or like 20 seconds to a minute, however long they need. I'm gonna try to thaw those out without cooking them too much. If I do, they're going into a skillet on the stove. So it's not gonna be the biggest deal, but I still don't want to have to do that. So let me do that and I'll come back to you guys in a second. So the meat is now all ready to go. So I'm gonna put it into a pan with the onions and then we are going to get on to the next steps. I'm actually getting super excited and super hungry. So let's go to the next step. Let's do this thing. Okay, so we're now over at the stove. I literally have you guys like propped up on boxes. So I really hope my camera doesn't fall. But I've got my frying pan. I'm gonna put the meat in here. It's over like at the sink. So I'm gonna put it in here and then I'll come back over to the stove and show you what to do next. I'm gonna use a little bit of spray oil. The meat should be greasy enough that it will be fine, but you never know with lean ground beef and it's my parents' pan. I wanna be as careful as possible. <laughs> the second I open the meat, the dog's coming over. But um, as you can see, it did kind of cook in the microwave. It took much more than one minute. That's okay. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna turn on my stove, break that up, let it cook for like a couple of seconds, and then I'm gonna put the onions in with it. I'm also gonna put some bacon bits. Costco sells these really great pre-cooked bacon, pre-cooked and pre-cut bacon bits. They're not like the ones that are like made out of salt and stuff. They're literally just cut bacon that you put in your freezer. So that's what I'm gonna use for this. If you need to cook fresh bacon, that is totally fine. It definitely works and would taste absolutely delicious. But for me, to cut some steps, that is what I'm gonna be doing. You see that little black thing? It was in a previous clip. That is what I'm using to film on the stove. So just don't mind that weird thing. It's about to have my phone in it. So that is cooking away. Um, I just added the onions, but I just wanted to show you the bacon bits that I use. These, so I'm about to put that in. So my meat, my onions, and my bacon is all done and ready to go. So I'm gonna turn down the heat and I am going to add all of my sauces that I need. Put them up on screen and we're gonna add those. It will go back to like a time lapse as I add them. But I'm gonna add them all in and mix it all together. The piece de resistance in this is the cream cheese. So don't forget it. It is what, it's what's gonna make it like a, like that cheeseburger. And it also puts a lot of moisture into the meat and into the mixture. So it's super, super important and it's super delicious. You can use regular cream cheese, like chai cream cheese, garlic and herb, super, super delicious. If you wanted, I was looking up recipes for the spring rolls. You can also add Velveeta, that's what some people use, but I think this works awesome. And then we will get on to the next steps. So the meat is all ready to go. I did cut the heat about halfway through putting all of my cream cheese into them. It doesn't need to be on, to be completely honest, and it all melted up. It was all good to go. I cut the heat because you kind of want it to be cool before you put it into things, especially the spring rolls. I kind of want it to be cooled down. And also because the last ingredient into the meat is an egg white so i want to make sure that's cool so that it doesn't cook the egg so i cut the heat removed it from the element there's some meat on the stove so if you can see that please ignore it i don't want to burn myself by trying to clean it up right now but i have a prepped baking pan right there because i'm going to show you guys how to assemble the buns first 
So first we have the bane of my existence, Pillsbury containers. These are country biscuits. This is what we're gonna use as the bread for the burger buns. I literally hate these so much. <laughs> and that's why I hate them. <laughs> I only took off that much, but it's done. It's over with. Just gonna make sure that they come all the way out. Ooh, this one's sticky. I don't usually stick to the tops like this. This is strange. I'm gonna take them out, clean up as you go, throw this out. So what we're gonna do with the biscuits is essentially like push them, starting from the middle out with your fingers, squishing them down so that they become more of a dough instead of like the fluffy biscuit. I'll show you up close. So I'm just squishing it down to make it flat and as wide as possible without it making any holes in it. Kind of want it to look like a tiny little pizza. And then you can put that back onto your baking sheet once it's all stretched out, something like this. You know, Pillsbury things are so useful. My family doesn't buy them that often, but I feel like 90% of the time that we do, we're not really using them for what they're intended for. Isn't that weird? They're just so good for like making cool different things. So I'm gonna do this and probably time lapse it, but I'll come back to you guys in the next step to show you what I'll be doing. So all of these are now laid out and circled. I'm now gonna break my egg and get just the egg white. And I'm gonna put that into my mixture. So I'm gonna mixy mixy this up into the meat. Just the egg white, I don't know if you guys can see it. Then I am going to put that mixture, about two tablespoons, into each one of these. And then I usually would put a, box, a tiny little block of cheese into it. I don't have cheese to put into them, so they're not gonna have a little piece of cheese but I'll put all the meat onto them and then I'll show you how to wrap them. Yeah. So it was lying, we do have cheese. I just cut it up into 10 little squares to go into the pots. So now we have that. So it's time to wrap all these up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab one of my flattened out buns, some of the meat mixture that now has egg, put about two tablespoons in, a piece of cheese on top. This is gonna help close it and also give you the flavor of the cheese. And then I fold over either side, get those to pinch together, and then you're just going to pinch it all together. So I probably didn't get enough meat. And make this little bun and put it on. I'm gonna put more meat in that, that didn't seem like enough. But essentially you just pinch it all together, flip it upside down, put it on your baking sheet, and do it to the rest of them, and that will be ready. You want it to look something like this. So I'm gonna do this to the rest of them and then put them in the oven. They're gonna bake at about 375 for about 15 minutes. Since I don't want this video to be too long, I'm gonna leave you guys here. And I'll see you guys when I'm ready to make the spring rolls, which is gonna be in about 20 minutes. Oh no, a bun committed suicide. Uh, hopefully cheese comes out of pants. It is time for a taste test of the buns. I have the ugly one with a bowl in it that spilled all over my jeans and has melted <laughs> on my knee. That's the carnage of today. Now, they've had these before. This is our dinner. It's kind of like, it's kind of like well. I like how you get the good, good bun and cheese for this now. I do think these are very like the Satouli canteen ones, except they're not as bready. Mm -hmm. And you can yeah. steam them, because no. you have to try that sometime and do the full Satouli canteen. I'm already teaching myself how to do spring rolls tonight. I can't teach myself two things. Mm -hmm. Delicious. I think, um, I'm not sure about it. I might have to have two or three more to be certain. Mm -hmm. Well, one has to stay for the thumbnail pictures. Oh. But you can eat We're good. two or three more. All right. So next time we'll be tasting something, we'll be spring rolls. They're in the oven for 20 minutes. I don't know when this is gonna show up on the video, so yeah, spring roll time. <laughs> so we're now at the spring rolls. So something that the spring rolls have in the parks that I think is super, super special to them and brings that flavor is pickles. They have little pickles. I'm sure that they use relish. I don't have relish, so I'm gonna cut up one of these pickles and put it in here and mix that all up to finish off the base for the spring rolls. I'll do that and I'll be right back to you guys. Hopefully MMG doesn't claim this video just for the small bit of music, but big fan of pickles, gotta eat one before I cut them. <laughs> Oh, you know. 
Okay, so I now set up to roll. This is my spring rolls paper that I have. I'm gonna carefully open this. I'm now gonna try to attempt to roll the spring rolls. I've also prepped another baking sheet here with parchment paper. I'm gonna do a baked method for this. Uh, I thought I was gonna have to do some crazy deep frying, but I found a baked method online. So that's what I'm gonna do because I also don't think that it's safe for me to deep fry. So I'll show you the process and we'll see what I can do and if these are gonna turn out. I really don't know, but I am going to try my best. <laughs> so first I'm gonna cut open the thing. And now I'm gonna take these out. Ooh, they're thinner than I thought they were gonna be. Okay, these are the same ones that the girl is using in this tutorial on how to roll spring rolls, so hopefully this works. I also haven't fully figured out what temperature I need to heat them up to, so there's that. Here is my spring roll paper. First thing I'm gonna do is take some of my mixture, I have it up here, and I put it in a cylinder shape along one corner. Is that enough? I really don't know what is too much or I'm just gonna add a little bit more. This might be a thick boy. So I'm just gonna move it close to the center. That looks good. Some of you might be watching and think this is too much and just know better, but this is what I'm gonna try. Then it says to take one end, push it under, kind of like a burrito. Turn it a little bit. Oh, grease is seeping out. Okay, um, fold in. Fold in, push, and then continue to turn. Wait a second. Guys, we have a spring roll. Okay, I'm gonna put this on the sheet behind me and I am going to keep rolling until I don't have any meat. I might grab a paper towel to wipe off the grease. I'm gonna turn on some music, but I'm really impressed with myself about this, so. So there you go. Um, I'm gonna keep going until I have no meat left. I'll time lapse so I can listen to music because I'm listening to Hamilton. So I'll be back. It's not for me to say you So here are all the spring rolls. So it did make 10, just like it makes 10 buns. So in the end, I did do pretty good with cutting it in half. So in the end, the recipe that I have will make you 10 spring rolls um, or 10 buns or 10 spring rolls and 10 buns if you double it, whatever you wanna do, which I think is pretty awesome. I have raised the temp on my oven to 400 degrees. I'm gonna put these in for 20 minutes. This is a suggestion I saw online that also taught me how to roll these. I'm like really impressed for my first time that they look like actual spring rolls. So I'm gonna put these in for 20 minutes and we'll come back to you for the taste test on these guys. Okay, it's now time for us to try the spring roll. Da da, mama! They're really greasy on the bottom, but this just that's what makes them authentic. How they cooked, because they are quite greasy when you get them. Remember how greasy and hot the last ones we had? But I think that baking them probably made them a little bit better. I'm really proud of my wrapping. I'm gonna say that all about it. Fantastic. <laughs> Not that good. Not that good. Yeah. Oh my. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. What do you think? I think it's amazing. I like those. Is it the close crunch, to the, the part? Oh good. yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's way better because it's not as greasy. And no lineup. Yeah, no, they're they're really good because they have fantastic crunch without like they're spring rolls, so they a little bit, but without being deep fried, they're not gonna be the same crispy not, all the way around. Well they're pretty crispy. Mm -hmm. I think we did need a little bit more ketchup, so I'll fix that for the recipe that I give you guys, but and um no. Happy about this. So how many spring rolls out of five are we giving? And these ones are five out of five. Like this. Five, five out of five? This is five out of five. This is as good as the spring roll cart. Thank you. It mm -hmm. is. But it's a little bit of Disney in your home. Mm -hmm. So good. We also cut a pickle instead of using relish, so. Mm. I think that worked really well. Yeah, I wouldn't want relish. Because I think better. that the bigger pieces of pickle actually work. But the trick also, if you're going to use a relish, use pickle relish rather than a sweet relish. So, for you guys, I will write down the recipe, either down below in the description, or I might post a Google Doc in the description that you can print out. Now, both recipes for you. This is my meat recipe, and I think it works really well. So, there we go. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.